Welcome to How to Rock Spirit's Sun Moon Alchemy series. This audio was compiled and recorded by Dustin Cormier, a Leo Ascendant Scorpio with Sagittarius Moon, born in the year of the Metal Ram. All the possible Western Sun and Moon sign combinations can be found and learned about here. This information is for educational purposes only. I do not own any of the following content. For more astrology lectures and my own Cosmic Consciousness audio lecture series, check out How to Rock Spirit's YouTube channel, where I rap about everything from philosophy and transpersonal psychology, to psychedelic spirituality, to tantric and occult mysticism, and even to Marx and Engels and the materialist sciences. See you there! Sun in a Water Sign Basically motivated by deep emotional yearnings and desires. Recharges energy through intense emotional experience and intimate involvement with people. Sun in Cancer. Experiences strength through nurturing, sensitive, mother-like qualities. Feels instinctive urge to protect one's ego. Builds inner self a nest from which it can safely radiate. Levels of vitality and creative energy depend on moods and so are difficult to maintain. Expresses self creatively through emotions and feels need to be recognized for sensitivity. Sense of individuality is expressed most clearly in a familiar, sheltered environment or situation. The Moon Sign and its Element These notes are also still from Stephen Arroyo's Chart Interpretation Handbook. The element of the Moon Sign represents an attunement from the past that manifests automatically a mode of feeling and being that one needs to be aware of in order to feel inwardly secure and at home with oneself. This element and experiences related to it feed your need to feel right about yourself. This element and experiences related to it feed your need to feel right about yourself. By such modes of self-expression, you are satisfying a deep inner need that can give stability to your entire personality. The moon's element also shows how you react instinctively to all experiences, with what energy you spontaneously adjust yourself to the flow of life. Moon in water signs. Reacts to changing experiences with sensitivity and emotion. Feels comfortable with self when feelings are deeply involved. Moon in Scorpio. Reacts intensely, passionately, with controlled emotional power. Self-image affected by complex, turbulent emotions. Confidence sometimes undermined by negative emotions or supported by passionate sense of purpose. Depth of feelings and secretiveness contribute to person's mystique and charisma. A need to deeply penetrate experiences leads to comprehension of underlying motives or to imagining all sorts of fearful motives in others. Fear of vulnerability and losing control can lead to emotional repression the following information comes from Isabel Hickey's Astrology, a Cosmic Science, copyright 1992 by Isabel M. Hickey Trust. Moon in Scorpio. Note that this is the fall position of the moon. Dominating and aggressive. Impatient and moody, given to brooding. Easily hurt and can be jealous. Impulsive. Desire is the motivating force. Strong pride and will. Intensely passionate in response to life. Set in ways and very stubborn. Apt to be disappointed in love. Apt to demand too much and not give enough of understanding. Sit in judgment on others too quickly. Greatest need? To learn to forgive and forget. Strong physically. Sensual. Extremist in temperament. Strong, deep feelings, but they need handling. Needs to achieve an optimistic attitude toward life. Go after what they want and usually get it and then find out it's not what they really wanted. In a male chart, will attract a possessive and jealous mate if moon is afflicted. Sun Moon Alchemy, the elemental combinations of the sun sign and the moon sign. The following information comes from Charles and Susie Harvey's Sun Sign Moon Sign. Copyright Charles and Susie Harvey, 1994, again in 2003 first published by Aquarian 1994. Each sun-moon type is a combination of elements. In the following descriptions of the element combinations, please remember that the pairing can be either way around. For example, a fire-earth combination refers equally to sun-fire-moon-earth as it does to sun-earth-moon-fire. 
There will be subtle differences, but the dynamic is generally the same. The four pure types, with both sun and moon in the same element, most vividly express the element involved. Such an emphasis on one element also represents an imbalance, so such types are liable to swing into their complementary or opposite element. Water-water combinations. Water is the element of feelings and imagination, and the English language is full of water imagery, which is descriptive of this type. The strongly water type is able to get into the mainstream and go with the flow. They drink in life's experiences, and nothing washes over them. They can gush with feelings, quickly go misty with emotions, and dissolve into tears. Sentimental and nostalgic about the past, this type can wax lyrical about his longings for times gone by, as does the Anglo-Irish dramatist Oliver Goldsmith, Sun in Scorpio, Moon in Cancer. I love everything old. Old friends, old times, old manners, old books, old wine. This type can also at times be a wet blanket, especially to more boisterous fire types and restless air types. In politics, their compassionate natures incline them to be the caring and compassionate wets rather than the airy dries with their doctrinal purity. Hardier types may consider water individuals to be drips and still wet behind the ears. But still waters run deep, and the feeling strengths of the double water type give the capacity to empathize with others and to show caring concern for everyone in need. This individual also has a rich imagination and often the ability to get inside the skin of another. Hence the poetic, artistic, and theatrical talents often come easily. A confusion of personal boundaries is, however, an occupational hazard of the strongly watery type. They can be so sensitive that they become psychic sponges, picking up moods and emotional undercurrents in the environment, and unable to differentiate their own feelings and needs from those of others. This type wants emotional security and emotional food, and because the two do not always come together in equal doses, they can easily get hurt. If wounded, this person can withdraw into an icy silence, but once their feelings are recognized and addressed, their heart quickly melts and thaws out, and they are soon back in the flow of things. Shadow Side Swimming in the seas of subjectivity does not make it easy for double water types to engage in clearly reasoned arguments or objective judgments. They know how they personally feel about people or situations, and that is their reality, rather than a collection of objective facts which lead indubitably to a logical conclusion. Hence the strongly watery individual tends to remain irrational when they think they are being rational. This type needs to learn how to think things through with more detachment. Yes, they may have had a bad experience with a Malaysian taxi driver, but does that really make all the Malaysian race bad? The double watery type is also prone to cling in relationships because they provide the arena for the emotional exchange, containment, and security that is so vital for this individual's well-being. This type often needs to learn that letting go of just a little and allowing loved ones more room for maneuver usually strengthens rather than jeopardizes a relationship. Male versus female. Water is undoubtedly a female-oriented element, and hence generally much easier in our society for females to handle than males. Whilst men can be sympathetic, caring, and compassionate, it is still not easy for men in the West to show their feelings or to allow themselves to be seen dissolving into tears. In consequence, Strongly watery men may actually swing into the opposite pole and become ultra-rational, detached, and unemotional to a degree that some would almost see as pathological. This can lead to men of this type, and some women, who take pride in showing no emotions and act only through reason. When this does happen, however, this type of polarized individual will always be found surrounded with highly emotional people and situations that act out the inner emotional life they find themselves unable to handle. This can be seen in the super rational husband with the hysterical wife, and the calm, reasonable psychologist who is deeply concerned in a supremely rational way to help those who have become confused and emotionally disturbed, quote unquote. The following observations about your sun-moon combination are drawn from insights gained from astrologer Jefferson Anderson's book, Sun Sign, Moon Sign, an observation of many different individuals. 
The writing itself comes from Mantak Chia and William Yu Wei's Cosmic Astrology. Copyright 2012 by North Star Trust, published by Destiny Books. Sun in Cancer, Moon in Scorpio, The Viper. Success in life is almost guaranteed because of your self-assurance and personal magnetism. Cancer Scorpios seem to just get things easier than others because they are just plain lucky. You have both influence and respect because, no matter what you undertake, you just seem to be a winner. This gets noticed. You appear mysterious and you intrigue people because of your Cancerian protective exterior. You do not want to share your inner thoughts, so you are guarded about revealing feelings and reactions. The Cancer Scorpio person is not the Cancer who most people think they know. They are not an insecure, timid introvert that we usually read about. The real shrewd and tenacious self is difficult to spot under your modest and mild-mannered exterior. You may seem unprepossessing and even modest, but it's not hard to discern your true inner shrewdness and tenacity. Underneath that cool image of yours is a very intense, forceful, and determined individual. You are a very emotional person beyond your exterior. The situation you are dealing with or the person himself or herself determine your response and reaction to them. Intuition is your decision maker, and reason plays little to no role. Your shrewdness and perception mean that you are almost always right. You are always plotting your next move because you are so untrusting and suspicious. Wrongs are never forgotten and you have a terrific memory. Betraying you is not a good idea because you will take your time and you will get your revenge. You can be vengeful, vicious, and petty. You are up for experiencing anything like most competitive people. You can go after pleasure, self-indulgence, and sensuality as aggressively as you do professional enterprises. You take risks about whom you can trust, and your sense is reliable in most cases. Making fun of you is hazardous, because you are quite serious about yourself. You, on the other hand, can be cruel, sarcastic, and blunt about the weaknesses of others, which you can readily perceive. Honing your sense of humor and tact would be a good idea. Gloom and depression are things that you might suffer from, even more than other cancers. Your emotions need to be dealt with candidly, and you should be less tight-lipped about your feelings, including hurt and enmity. Holding a grudge or pouting are not healthy. You think life is an endless struggle, and you are always on guard. Quick note from Charles and Susie Harvey's Sun Sign Moon Sign. Sun in Cancer, Moon in Scorpio, your greatest strengths. Personal Magnetism emotional strength and courage in times of crisis, acute perception and analytical imagination, intensity of your devotional nature and commitment to others, caring, healing capacities. Your greatest weaknesses, defensiveness, moodiness, and possessiveness, proneness to react with fanatical prejudice, to cling to the past, to live through other people if your own creative aspirations have not been developed. Images for integration. Under a full moon, an exorcist performs a life-giving ritual. The possession fades away and a child's life is saved. Whilst preparing his genealogical tree, a young man discovers the lost grave of his great-great-grandmother.